Dinner for Shoes, please. Hello, and welcome to Dinner for Shoes. Uh, I don't know why I feel a little rusty, but let's get into it and see if that rust clears up. Um, this episode is called Mocktails and Dry January Jammies. I'm doing Dry January for the first time in my life. Um, I don't know. I think I was never really much of a resolution person. That is for sure. I, it's not that I don't believe in resolutions and I love how like the start of the new year is like, oh, the start of a new me. And I think it's great for people to have like reset moments in their lives. And like, they think to themselves, oh, I'm going to, you know, kind of like put this goal into play and I'm really going to go at it in, in a more intense way than I've ever gone about it before. And I just don't really do that. I am the kind of person that's like, if I want to make a change, I start tomorrow or I start like on Monday, but I still start sooner rather than later. I don't keep putting it off and putting it off because I believe that if you keep putting something off, you're only going to keep putting it off and you're never going to actually do it. Or then when you start to do it, you're just going to fall prey to like your old ways quicker. That's just the way that I feel, but everyone's very different. This year, I wanted to do Dry January. I felt like it played a good part in the new 2024 me. But I'm also not holding myself to it where it's like, if it doesn't work out and I do end up having a drink, like I'm going to, you know, be down on myself. But I'm really doing it for the mental health benefits. Now, I want to start off by talking about this before we get into the mocktails, my slipper, everything that I'm wearing, and my favorite PJ brands, just because it is winter and I feel like that's a great time to celebrate PJ brands, also not to mention Valentine's Day is coming up, so if you wanna get someone something small, pajamas, I have like a whole range of designers and brands and they're all ranged by price point. So anyway, we'll get there, but, I think it's important to talk about mental health because I do suffer from anxiety um, and for a large part of my life, I've had severe panic attacks and um, like it's not a large part of my life, but for a significant amount of time, I was having very bad panic attacks. Um, I'm on Prozac. I think these things are important. I feel like they're kind of like trigger warning type conversations, but I feel like we need to talk about mental health because I think the most important thing when it comes to mental health is that the people who are going through shit know that they're not alone and that others are suffering in either the same way, different ways. Mental health looks different on everyone. So I do think it's really important to discuss it. And I will say that alcohol definitely impacts my anxiety. And I mean, we've all felt what a hang anxiety feels like, a hangover feels like. But lately, as I've gotten older, and everyone talks about this, they're like, oh, as as you get older and you drink more, like, you know, you can't really, you have, you have significant hangovers, you can't work, you can't, a lot of people went through like binge drinking in college, which is a whole thing. And I didn't really do that just because I went to a school where I honestly didn't have a very big social life and I wasn't like going to frat parties and, you know, shit like that. But like, I think I was definitely hit with the whole binge drinking culture later on in life. And so it's definitely very much a thing and it's hard to escape it. And I think that it's just something to talk about and, you know, be you just should, everyone should just be aware that others could be struggling through it, too. So I did feel that in recent history, maybe the past year, two years, three years or so, when I would drink, I would have horrible anxiety, but to a point where like it would really affect the rest of my week. And I would like kind of feel really, really shitty until maybe even Wednesday, I would start to feel like me again. And then the weekend would come along and everyone would be like, it's Friday, let's go get drinks after work. And I, it, you know, you would just like fall back into a cycle. So I think that a lot of people who are probably in their 30s like me do um, deal with that if they are drinkers. And I just think it's, you know, uh, important to stay true to you and what you want to do. And there's no reason why 
you can't say no to going out one night, right? This is like the conversations that our moms tell us. This is literally the conversation my mom has with me. But now I'm like <laughs> trying to practice what she preaches and having it here. Um, I am definitely doing that this month. I'm like not going out. I'm not being social. I'm kind of like resetting, being a hermit this January. And for no reason, not because it's dry January and not because I want to set this resolution, but for no reason other than my body asked me for it. It just was like, you need a month to kind of reset in some way. Um, on top of that, I also had just trained for the New York City Marathon and my body is now, I'm the kind of person who like, I really can't, like my body isn't made to be a runner. <laughs> so I can't run for a long period of time without like getting hurt. And I just hurt my back. I didn't hurt my back running, but I was doing um, squat thrusts and with too heavy of a weight, um, which is 15 pounds, which is very sad. <laughs> but um, I did hurt my back while I was like jumping back and then like going to pick up the weight. And now I'm taking all of January off from running and I'm just, I'm swimming. I'm doing a lot of hot yoga and a little bit of like uh, stability work to kind of like strengthen my running muscles. And I'll get back to it. It's just, that's what my body's asking me for. It's not because it's January. It's just because this month, my body's asking me to do that. So I was interested because I had seen a lot of like dry January articles popping up. So I just want to read a few tidbits, just tidbits. And this is not, I'm not preaching dry January on anyone. I do also want to say this is now the second weekend when I'm recording this. It's the second weekend of January. And I do feel like I'm starting to feel that like, hmm, I kind of want to drink at the end of a long week, like feeling creep up on me. So I'm not sitting here being like, I feel great. My body's awesome. I actually don't really physically feel that different yet. I think the number one thing I'm feeling is just that relief on the weekend of being able to get up on a Sunday morning and like go take a hot yoga class, wake up super early, like get some work done if I have to on the weekend. You know, if you if you were drinking on the weekend, even if you're not feeling that hangover, your body is still going to like put you in that kind of depressed state. And we're going to read about why right now, why you also don't get as good of sleep when you're drinking alcohol, which now these are all things I'm saying and they may or may not <laughs> like make a difference on my life moving forward because I am the kind of person that enjoys drinking. I think that it's fun. It relaxes me. It kind of relieves me from my obsessive thoughts because I have an obsessive mind. Um, so, and, and I love the taste of drinks, which is what we're going to get into because I'm going to make some mocktails. Um, and I appreciate it. Like I like learning about different types of tequila. I think tequila is really good. Like I like the taste of it. So I don't know. It's it. You know, we'll see what happens in the future. But let me just read a couple of little tidbits. These are very small little tidbits. OK, so this is from a New York Times article written by Melinda Wenner Moyer. So this is just some stats, some quick facts, Kit, some quick facts, quick facts for you. OK. Um, an estimated 15 to 19 percent of U.S. adults in recent years have pledged to participate in dry January. Cool. 15 to 19 percent. There is a number for you. Awesome. OK. The benefits, though, depend on how much and how frequently you drank before. That I can 100 percent see. I definitely was not the kind of person to like have a drink in the middle of the week. And that's mostly because I sometimes will sit and work until like 10 o'clock. <laughs> like I just like don't. And, and I I'm not great at like working and writing when I'm like having a glass of wine. So I just prefer not to. But I will drink socially on the weekend. So I think that can be kind of considered binge drinking. Right. Because you're drinking like all your drinks, maybe one day of the week. Right. Come on. Come into the camera. Come in. Good girl. OK. OK. So quitting. This is from the same New York Times article. Quitting often prompts people to ask themselves, why am I drinking this amount? Does it play a role in how I feel? Do I think I need it? And that's an interesting question, too. And I think that my answer for that is different all the time. OK, now this oh, same article. A study published in 2016, and I will link to, to these articles and to these um, studies, 
A study published in 2016 found that even six months later, people in Britain who had participated in dry January drank alcohol on average one fewer day per week and consumed nearly one drink less each day that they did drink compared with their alcohol use before the break. So too long, don't read, TLDR. People who participated in dry January actually ended up, I guess, liking how it felt or not needing as much alcohol after dry January, okay? Now, this is another New York Times article. It's kind of like a complimentary article. Okay, this is important. Um, we have the founder of the Sober Black Girls Club quoted in this article, kind of just suggesting, don't take on too many New Year's resolutions. For instance, doing dry January while adopting a new diet may be a recipe for failure. I can totally see that. I think that if I was like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of like another like really, I mean, like training for a marathon was kind of like a resolution in a way. And if I was doing that at the same time as like doing dry January and holding myself to like a promise, that does put pressure on us, I think. So that's important to consider too. Um, and there was another recommendation in this article that said rewarding yourself either at the end of each day or at the end of the week could be beneficial while you're doing dry January. So for example, <laughs> I just stocked up on my favorite ice cream for the weekend and I'm going to like pig out on my favorite pints of ice cream because I want to reward myself for staying true to a promise that I made to myself. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now there's another article from the Washington Post. It says that a 2022 review of research on month-long alcohol, I can't mouth the little bit, alcohol, maybe I'm drunk, alcohol abstinence showed that participants frequently reported sleep improvements. Now this goes back to why we get less sleep or less quality sleep when we're drinking. 56% of people reported that they slept better without alcohol. And here is why this could be true. When you are drinking, alcohol is a depressant. Alcohol enters the stomach and the small intestine and it's absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to the liver, okay? There, there are enzymes and they metabolize the alcohol. But the process can take a while and during that time, the excess alcohol continues to circulate throughout the body, repeatedly distracting the brain as it tries to cycle through the stages of sleep. So your brain is trying to sleep and your body is trying to process the alcohol all at once, okay? You see why this could be overwhelming for your brain and your body, your body. It could be overwhelming for your body. So that's why you're not getting that quality sleep. And then I also found this article before I decided to do dry January, funnily enough. And it was just about like why we get anxiety and why we feel so fucking horrible the day after drinking sometimes. And I wanted to read about it. I was just curious. This is like before I decide I'm going to like stop drinking for a little while. And basically this reasoning totally resonated with me. It says the brain is a finely balanced machine. You add in alcohol and that balance dissolves like a sugar cube in hot tea. Makes sense, right? You can picture it. To make matters worse, this anxiety tends to kick in when you're trying to sleep off the alcohol. So true. How many times have you like woken up and all you want to do is go back to sleep because you're hungover and you just want to sleep it off and you can't and your brain is just going crazy and like a million miles a minute and you're like having all these obsessive thoughts and you're like, you just can't relax, right? As your blood alcohol level goes down during the night, you're left with too many receptors and so too much glutamate glutamate, glutamate activity. And that is why you are too alert and why the world seems too much. Although a really good fat bagel doesn't seem like too much when you're hungover, but okay. So these are all very interesting facts that I gathered and they all made me think. And I think that everyone's going to have a different experience with dry January if they're doing it. Everyone has a different experience with alcohol. I am by no means speaking for anyone else, but this is just my personal experience with alcohol. And I think it's important to put it out there because a lot of people don't talk about that horrible hangover next day. Like you might text your friend who you were out with the night before and say, oh, I'm so hungover, like we had far too many. But in reality, you're feeling like you just feel, you just feel so crappy. And sometimes you don't feel like you can really get into how crappy you're feeling with other people. So this is just me being like, it sucks. 
it happens to me, it happens to you, it happens to all of us. I'm not drinking this month, taking a break from that feeling. And hopefully when I do start drinking again, because I like drinking and I'm going to drink again in my life, I will just be more intentional about the way that I'm drinking. I hope that if I glean anything from this experience, that is what I glean. Also, some really great mocktail recipes, which I am going to come back with and we are going to make and you are going to crack up because it's going to be so funny watching me try to make mocktails in front of you. Yes, I'm going to do it in front of you. It's going to get messy and you can't have any. You can't have any. Why are you not really in this? Coming to the scene. Oh, I gotta change this camera angle. Okay, now let's quickly talk about my outfit and I'm going to talk about my favorite pajama brands, as I told you. I call, I'm calling it sleepwear superlatives. And I'm really excited to walk you through my favorite pajama brands. I really, really am. But let's start with the basics. This is an airy slipper. It is so soft. You see this and you're like, that's a plain slipper, Sarah. Yes, it is a plain slipper, but it has a, t a slightly green tint to it, first of all, which I'm wearing green. So, hey. Um, <laughs> and I, I just can't explain how soft some airy products are and you wash them and you're just like, how is this still so soft? And yet it is, yet it is. So I love these slippers and I'm wearing them with this free people, uh, pajama set. I actually have the top too. And I decided not to wear the top because I want to feel when I'm like doing my podcast, I want to feel like me and I want to feel comfortable. And honestly, spoiler alert, free people got the superlative for best boho sleepwear style. And I'm not very boho. I can appreciate the boho aesthetic, but it's not me. So I really liked the idea of adding this ribbed green one shoulder top from Pretty Lavish that I had never worn. It's got a really cool like open back. I loved the idea of adding that to these like really loose, cotton, cool, stitches of neon, floral, wide leg, scalloped trimmed free people pants. And free people has great pajamas, believe it or not. I think a lot of people don't realize that free people is a great pajama brand, um, but it really is. And what I think I'm gonna do since the cats won't really go after drinks, I am going to start making the drinks. Okay, we're gonna start making the drinks and I'm gonna bring them all over and we'll make a mocktail and then I'll go through like a few PJ brands. Then we'll make a different mocktail and I'll go through a few PJ brands. Now I'm making a total of five mocktails, okay? Five different mocktails. Now some of these mocktails, by the way, involve some non-alcoholic beverage companies that I think you need to know about. I've tried some of them. I haven't tried others. So I'm going to be trying everything in front of you. Get excited. Um, I'll be right back and we'll set up my mocktail presentation. Be right back. All right, we're back. Kit helped me set up my whole mocktail station. I hope I pronounce all of these brands correctly when I'm drinking them. But I'm really excited. We have our bucket of ice back here. We have cat hair to put in to the mocktails. It's going to be great. Something very important to remember about all of these mocktails is that a lot of them come from, well, first of all, a lot of them include some of my favorite brands. And then a lot of the mocktails actually come from the website. Like, would you believe it that Celsius, the energy drink, has mocktails on the website, which I do love a Celsius for like if you need a little pick me up. Um, I'm actually not an energy drink or energy uh, powder person before the gym, but I do see the appeal. I just can't fathom drinking something that tastes like soda that early in the morning because I'm a morning workout person. I think if I was an afternoon workout person, 100% totally. But that is my problem with like PM workouts. I can't motivate myself at that time. You know what I mean? Okay, so mocktail recipes. So we're gonna start with the body bloat. Now this one, this one, this one, this is from Anima Mundi's apothecary and it's the belly loving mocktail some of these i'm going to be um there's going to be twists on them oh i just realized i forgot my mint and my rosemary but i can always go grab it okay so this okay so these 
Anima Mundi herbal supplements. They are meant to be added to your beverages. Um, actually, a lot of them have recommendations of like adding them to hot water and letting them really like absorb into the water and then combining that in a mocktail or, you know, just anything. I actually put a little bit of the Metabolism Boost Fat Belly Liver and Gut Detox Herbal Supplement drops into my coffee this morning, which I think probably counteracts in some way. But anyway, I used the dropper this morning and I actually think I might try just because of the whole absorbing thing. This herbal supplement tonic, which is actually, it's called, it says handcrafted plant medicine. Um, but that in my cocktail that I make first. So what this actually says is that we're supposed to brew the belly love in hot water for at least five to 10 minutes. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that. Uses her teeth to open things. Story of my life. Uses her teeth to, do not for shoes. Uses her teeth to open things. Eats her shoes. Problem, problems. Okay, so this, I'm actually curious what this smells like. There's a protectant layer. I love a protectant layer. It makes me think that like whatever I'm about to eat is really sealed. Oh, this actually smells relatively good. I'm surprised, oh, there, is there a scooper? There's no scooper, that's weird. I feel like normally these things come with a scooper, but hey. This is my Kate Spade cocktail shaker. It's funny, I actually just put my finger into the powder and I get the SNS powder on my nails and it like looked like that was happening all over again. And I was like, wait, am I getting a manicure? All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of powder. This recommends, what's one serving? 1 1.5 teaspoons. I would say that's probably about, maybe I went a little over, but hey, that's what happens when you eyeball. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of that. We're gonna add just one cube to shake it up. One cube. Now, it did want us to let that absorb into the hot water. We didn't do that. But then it says add into kombucha and then pour into a cocktail glass for fun. Add ice cubes if desired. Always desired. Love ice. I'm a girl who loves ice. And I love the Health Aid kombucha. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I've tried the other kombucha brands. I just, I can't get behind them. So this one is my favorite. It has blood orange, carrot, and ginger. I'm such a ginger person, like you have no idea. So I'm gonna add that in. That sizzle, that sizzle just makes you want some alcohol. No, I'm kidding, it doesn't. It's not gonna stop sizzling. Health Ed Kombucha sizzles until it fizzles. Like, I don't know, that's not the slogan. But so this is my beautiful Kate Spade cocktail maker. As you can see, it's like dusty because I literally never use it. I do use the cock, the, the a shot glass. I like, I especially love this because it's got like the half on the other side. So I just think that's great. Okay, we're gonna add some kombucha in here. Now the problem is that kombucha is bubbly. So when I shake it in a cocktail shaker, there's a good chance it's gonna get everywhere. So what we'll do is put that on tight, not fill it up all the way and just give it a, a gentle shake. A gentle shake. It's exploding. <laughs> Don't explode. It didn't explode. Okay. It just got my phone a little wet, but hey, story of my life. Girls, come have some mocktail. All right. Oh, this looks like very red and beautiful. Just get that in there. It actually filled up my glass perfectly. Great. Okay. How am I gonna get, get this open? Oh, I also forgot my limes and my lemons. Damn it. Okay, that's fine. I'll go grab them actually. I feel like you can't do this without limes and lemons. Hold. <sighs> I'm back. I am back. Got a, a lemon, got a lime. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, but I am also wearing my lime bubble bar earrings. They come with like the whole tequila set. But I was like, save, skip the alcohol, you know, hold the alcohol. So I love mint in a drink, love, like always. So I don't even care what drink it is, mint goes in, done. I also have some rosemary, but I don't know if any other drinks I'm making really go with rosemary, so we'll get there. And I think with this drink, I'm gonna do lemon. Kit thinks that food's involved in this, but it's not. 
I was talking to my boyfriend like the other night about how annoying it is. Oh, because we went to ABCV in New York City and they give you like lemons and limes to squeeze on your food. But they never give you a lemon with a seed. And I was like, I appreciate that so much. Squeeze. Okay. So let's enjoy. Belly deep bloat. Here we go. Oh, damn. That's fresh. <clears throat> that is really fresh. I love that. And there's something about sipping it with the mint literally in your nose that makes it even more fresh. Okay. So on that note, let's start with my favorite pajama brands. Now, let's talk about free people first. Free people, surprisingly, that's definitely one of my faves. And what I have to say is that I'm giving them free people best boho, best assortment of boho pajamas. A lot of people shop free people for bohemian, the bohemian aesthetic, and they don't even know that there's a whole category of like loose, wide leg, silky, sometimes, sometimes linen, even like really big oversized shirts that work as pajamas. So important to note that the next time you're shopping on Free People's website, do not knock that pajama category, that page. It's really, really great stuff. Um, I also think I have like a range of uh, different price points here when it comes to pajamas, but Free People does veer on the the, the more affordable side, I, I'm finding that pajamas are kind of expensive. I never really thought about like pajamas as a, as a category and whether or not they're expensive, but I'm finding that they kind of are. And Free People is one of the ones that are more affordable. I think that might be a good way to actually sort this. I'll start with the more affordable ones, tell you their superlatives, and then we'll make another drink. Okay, so, and oh, and I'll rate all the drinks so you know like what products you need to get if you want to start like a mocktail kick. Okay, I'm also going to talk about Airy because my slipper was Airy, right? I am rating them for the sleepwear superlative, best colorways. Now, colorways, I was telling my boyfriend the other night about the word colorways. I was like, yeah, like it's got, it comes in so many colorways. And he was like, what do you mean colorways? You mean colors? And I was like, no, colorways. Like when you're talking about fashion things, it's colorways. It's just, it sounds more chic. It's a fashion. So I was like, next time that you talk about like what color mock neck you want to wear, because he has like a mock neck and he's like, I'm going to wear my mock neck. And I was like, what color, what colorway is it in? You know, you say colorway when you're, when you're talking about fashion, colorway. So anyway, Aerie has a lot of good colorways and they're one of the more affordable brands and they've got everything from like short short sleeve pajama sets to long sleeve comfy sets. Um, I love Aerie as a brand. I think that they're so inclusive and that's really important to me. So Aerie's great as well. And speaking of inclusive, I'm going to go with Tomboy X next. This brand is, they get my sleeper superlative for most inclusive. And I don't just mean because they're an inclusive brand that really values genderless fashion, which I value and think that like all sites and brands should be gender neutral at this point. I mean, I just feel like it's 2024, like, come on. But anyway, don't get me started on that. We're not talking politics. Okay. But anyway, Tomboy X is inclusive in the sense that no matter what you like to wear to sleep, they have that for you. So they do have like the pajama sets if you're into doing a whole like, oh, cute matching jammies thing. Or if you like to sleep in your underwear and like a t-shirt, which I like to really do, technically I don't really sleep in sets like this because I'm a hot sleeper. They have that too. And I love their underwear. Their waistbands are really comfortable. Um, they have rainbow waistbands, which are so cool. Not all of their underwear, but I do love the ones that have that. So best inclusive for Tomboy X. Let me get through one more. One more on the affordable end of things before we go up to the contemporary. Now let's do best seasonal variety. I gave that sleepwear superlative to Savage. I love Savage pajamas. I actually have a pair of navy blue silk Savage pajamas. They have a, a green, like this green contrast trim and they're so comfortable. And I have always thought like, oh, if I sleep in satin pajamas, I'm gonna sweat even more in the middle of the night. No. I don't sweat in these. They are long sleeves and long pants and I do not sweat in them. I love them. I've gotten compliments on them. I can't tout Savage enough. Like I really love Savage as a brand. I think 
the colors and like the creativity that goes into the designs are they're extensive. Like you never know what you're going to get next. Yeah. So go savage. Let's make another mocktail. Next on our list, we are going to go to da, 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 my Celsius margarita to keep me like up. Now, my thing about Celsius is that I only like one flavor. Sparkling orange. It's my only, my only liked flavor. Okay. So where'd my shaker go? Oh, okay. So this, again, all of these have like fizz. So I'm like nervous about like really shape. Maybe I just like blend a little. Yeah. This is more like a spoon cocktail, mocktail thing. One cup of sparkling Celsius tropical vibe, but I'm not going for that. Step aside, you. All right, we're just gonna do a little bit of Celsius. And then this calls for two teaspoons of pineapple juice, but I think I'm gonna go with, I got some pomegranate juice. I'm more of a pomegranate person. I don't really like pineapple juice, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna go with pomegranate. Actually, this is a pomegranate lemonade tea that I've never tried and I'm really excited to try it. So let's see. I just wanna try it on its own. Oh, wow, very sweet. Okay, I think I'm gonna really, really like this. We're gonna add coconut water. Now this says to add Vita Coco coconut water. I just love Harmless Harvest. I'm a bit like, I love Harmless Harvest. So I'm gonna put this in. Mm. It says stir until well combined. And it also says add a lime, which I totally understand because I feel like coconut and lime kind of goes well together. I had a real cocktail once upon a time and it actually had lime and coconut. And like, you know, there's the song. You put the lime in the coconut and shake it all up. I love that song. Okay. I love that song. Let's put a couple cubes. Actually, just one cube. Let's turn that around. Spin it with my little green spoon. All right, let's try this one. Hmm. That is extremely tropical. Let me just see right now which one I like best. I think it's the first one. Yeah, it's definitely still the first one. I'm a big kombucha person. I love kombucha, so I have to say that's why. I don't love like super tropical fruity drinks, so I think that's why this one isn't my favorite. But now let's get into some contemporary, okay? So next on the sleepwear superlatives. Let's jump back over to the sleepwear superlatives. Okay, so. Let's get into some well-known sleepwear brands. Sleeper. Sleeper. Sleeper is hands down the coolest pajamas. I gave them the superlative for most stylish sleepwear brand. St ugh, most stylish sleepwear brand. Now, people will wear sleeper pajamas out. Literally like you're going to a party, it makes for a great evening look. Most of them are trimmed with feathers around the ankles and around the trim. They sometimes have like glitzy, uh, like glitter fabric. Um, they're all different colors. They continue to put out new silhouettes. I think one of my favorites recently is like, they, I think they come in peach and black, I wanna say. And it's like this high neck version, long sleeves, almost like a kimono, like very 60s, very, very cool. So that sleeper, definitely check them out. Now, if you're in the sleeper, crew, but you want something to actually sleep in and you tend to wear your sleeper pajamas out, Lily Silk is a lesser known brand that specializes in silk pajamas. And I'm telling you, these pajamas are amazing as well. So I would definitely, if you're a silk pajama sleeper, like I said, I had that silk pair from Savage, but I wouldn't say that Savage is like known for their silk. Lily Silk all really cool, plain, simple designs. They're awesome. Oh, Lily Silk, I gave the superlative best silk. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, yeah. Okay, next superlative is best work from home. CV CVPJ was founded by Caroline Voigt, and she is from New Jersey, and these brands are made... Actually, no. The pajamas are made in New Jersey. I'm not sure if she is from New Jersey, but 
I love that they're made in New Jersey, represent. And these, I give the superlative best work from home because they come in really cool prints. And you'll see people like all, they're all stylized on the website with like accessories, like kind of like the accessories that you would wear when you're on like a Zoom meeting. So this brand was literally founded to be like the work from home pajama company. So I just love that. Okay, I think I'm just gonna wrap it. We're getting into the a little bit more of the expensive range here, but I can't not mention Eberjay. Eberjay or Eberjay? I don't know. You guys know I don't know how to pronounce shit. But Eberjay, 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 Eberjay is a Sophia Richie loved brand. You know how I love Sophia Richie. She actually wore a monogram version of their pajamas for her get ready with me um, on her wedding weekend. And it kind of went viral on TikTok. And so anyway, they are very cool. You can get the monogram, which I like. Also, I didn't put them on the list just because I love Laleen for other things, but Laleen also has the monogrammed option on their pajamas and they're very cool. So I will, I will link them and just say we referenced them. But I did give Eber J the superlative for softest. Now, We've got a couple more. Um, Fleur du Mal, I did best his and hers for a superlative. Now, Fleur du Mal, their pajamas, they're a lot of silk, but really cool, unique prints. And they almost, well, there are men's pajamas as well, which I think is super cool. And I'm just like waiting for Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey to like get engaged in Fleur du Mal pajamas. <laughs> Joseph Falconer, aka Taylor Swift stylist, what are you doing? Get them in Fleur du Mal. Actually, you and Kit should wear Fleur du Mal pajamas. Would you like that? I would like that. I would like that. I would like that. Do you want a mocktail? Do you want a mocktail? Do you want a mocktail? You have a mocktail. <laughs> Just kidding. That's a real tale. That's not a mocktail. That's a real tale. Anyway. You, you stay right here. Okay, or not. <laughs> so, when are when is our Taylor and Travis going to get in Fleur du Mal? When? Okay, so they are best his and hers. The final is the best superlative for most Lux. And that would be Olivia Von Halle. These pajamas are unreal. They are like the cocktail or mocktail. You get on the menu, that's like $45 and... It tastes as good as the price tag. I can't speak during this episode. I don't know. This is, I'm very rusty. But it tastes just as good as the price. I think that these have alcohol in them. I do. It tastes just as good as the price suggests it should taste. I'm going to talk this slow for the rest of the episode. Anyway, Olivia Von Halle, amazing pajamas. They are very luxe. They are very expensive. But if you're looking, I would say they, these could be great for a gift if you really want to splurge on someone special. Or if you want to get like a really luxe gift for a friend, maybe they're getting married and you want to go in with a bunch of people, that could be a cool idea. So I would say check them out. They're always doing really cool new prints, new fabric. It's it's incredible. They're they're just honestly this website is just fun to scroll through. All right. Those are my superlatives for best PJs. Now, let's finish with our mocktails because I have three more that I want to make, okay? Okay. Now, the next one, Passion Fruit Seco Spritz Mocktail. Now, this is with Groovy's Seco. Now this is going to be funny because I never fucking, how do we take a, a cap off of a bottle? No, really. I actually don't know. I, I don't drink beer. So I, I don't know if I can even do this. Oh, 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 it's like this. Right. Yep. Thank you, Kate Spade thing. Oh, you're so kind. I've never used you before. I guess what? You just got to keep opening it on like the different sides. Is it really this hard to like open a bottle of beer? See, this is why I sliced my finger in half with glass things. Okay, so here's what we're doing in this one. 
Mm. So this is a dry secco, meaning that it doesn't actually have alcohol in it. And it says to do a little bit of a squeeze of lime. This also calls for coconut water, which is interesting. But you pour a little bit of the dry secco, which, you know what? I kind of want to taste on its own. There's a lot of glass here. This is a great dry secco. This tastes like freaking champagne. I'm not kidding. Wow. And it's only 50 calories for the whole bottle. Damn. Sign me up. Sign me up. Okay. Now it wants you to put in some coconut water and it wants you to garnish with mint and ice and lime. <laughs> I love. I'm crazy. Okay. Mmm. Okay. This is interesting because as far as sweet level goes, this one's in between. This one was really sweet, the one with the Celsius. Like almost too sweet for me. If this was a cocktail, not a mocktail, you would have it with rum. This one is a little bit like in between. But then this one is still the most fresh. Even I think if I put some mints, even if I put a little bit of mint in this guy, I still don't think it'll be as fresh. Yeah, it's still not as fresh. There's something about Prosecco that I just think doesn't really go with mint. So, but I don't want to knock, you know, this. Finally, we've got, oh, and by the way, Groovy's Sangria, alcohol removes sparkling red wine. I may as well just try it just to see what it tastes like for all you Sangria lovers. Oh, <laughs> I So that is good. <laughs> that is good, but I, what I what I'm going to say about it is that it spills. <laughs> It spills, and it, what's interesting about that is that sangria generally doesn't have fizz, but that has fizz. So that's just interesting to me. And the final, because I really should go at this point. I am wasted. Um, no, no, I'm not. This is just me. Okay, so this is De, De Soy, which is another non-alcoholic brand. And they want you to make a guava grapefruit rosé spritz, which they tell you to put a full can of this rosé with tea and grapefruit and ice. I'm just going to try this on ice because I'm very curious. This is a 30, no, it's a 60 calorie can, okay? And it comes in a bunch of different flavors, but... This one is sparkling, non-alcoholic aperitif, jammy summer fruit, earthy, and bitter. So it gives you kind of like a flavor um, profile there. Oh, whoa. That's very cool. It almost has a butterscotch back taste to it, weirdly enough. So that's de soy for you. Now, my final cocktail is inspired by a reel that my best friend Sasha sent me. She's also doing Dry January and she's done it for many years. And she found this hilarious reel by someone on the internet that kind of went viral. And everyone kind of makes this cocktail in a slightly different way. But Sasha and I grew up loving a good DC. So we thought it was hilarious. DC stands for Diet Coke. Sorry, mom. My mom's like, my mom's like, don't drink Diet Coke. And I don't normally drink Diet Coke. I don't normally drink soda at all. But it is the kind of thing where it's like, hey, I'm not going to be so hard on myself this month specifically because I'm making this other promise to myself when I'm doing it. And so this girl creates this whole reel and she's talking about like, Oh, you know, I am making my favorite cocktail. Me and my boyfriend are doing dry January. Like I'm making my favorite cocktail and it's just hands down the best cocktail I've ever had. It's it will it's a mocktail, not a cocktail. And she like goes through all the steps of how she makes it. And at the end of the day, it's literally just Diet Coke with lemon. And I will say as someone who likes Diet Coke, Lemon tastes really good with it. So see, mom, that's all I'm going to have. I'm just going to have a little bit. I'm going to have a sip. There's really nothing like it. There just isn't. But, you know, 
At the end of the day, I agree, soda is bad for you. It's true, there are tons of articles, so I'm not promoting Diet Coke. I'm just saying it tastes good. I'm just saying it tastes good. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about some of my favorite pajama brands. It is the winter after all. You deserve to be snuggly. You deserve to, to cuddle up. And if you are interested in getting a friend or a family member some PJs for Valentine's Day, I think it makes a great gift. Go Fleur du Mall if you want to be a little bit lingerie inspired. Or for Love and Lemons. I'll also link them here because they're, they're another great like lingerie inspired PJ brand. I love you. Thank you for joining me on my dry January. And we'll be back next time. I still won't be able to drink then, but we'll, we'll eat something really nummy. Bye.